Hello, welcome to Bragway TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Herbert Macaulay. So many people came to meet the country called Nigeria. Why some proudly attach their origin to it without knowing whose efforts brought about the freedom in this country? A drive down the history points fingers to many heroes, one of which is Herbert Olayinka Samuel Macaulay, who is the father of Nigerian nationalism. This champion was born into the world on the 14th day of November 1864 in Lagos as the seventh child into the family of Thomas Babenti Macaulay. He is the grandson of the legend Bishop Ajayi Crowder. His parents were slave returnees from Sierra Leone. His father returned as a missionary and educator in the church with the aim to establish missions across the West African coast. So what can say that right from childhood, Herbert was placed on the track even though he chose a different path from his parents. Having come from such an influential home, he was educated. Initially homeschooled by his mother until the age of five in 1869, he entered post school breadfruit for his primary education. He was enrolled into the Church Missionary Society, CMS Grammar School, one of the best secondary schools at that time, founded by his father in 1859, after which he enrolled into the civil service as a clerk assistant in 1881. He was sent abroad nine years later to further his study at Trinity College, London, by the government on scholarship. Three years later, he came back as a professional engineer, the first in the areas now called Nigeria. Despite his level of professionalism and appointment as a surveyor of land owned by the colonial government, he was not spared from racial discrimination from the colonial rulers, especially in the area of payment. The only qualification a white man needed was his skin color, while he, as a black man, even with his level of education, received less. He became angry and resigned in 1898 to establish his own private practice in Lagos as a surveyor and architect. He was charged with financial misconduct and jailed for two years with restricting order never to run for any public position. Upon his release in 1908, he got more involved in politics but through journalism, although one cannot really say if what he saw in prison motivated this interest. He became a prominent contributor for the Chronicle, where he saved to buy Lagos Daily News with support from his friend in 1927. That newspaper was the first to be established in 1925 in Nigeria. Now he placed the paper so it was easier to dictate the tune. His articles, commentaries were all written to criticize the discrepancy that existed in government. He wrote on racial discrimination of the blacks by the whites, differences in taxation, salary, locations, free press, denial of ownership and policies that were not in favor of the blacks. With no limit to his writings, it wasn't a surprise for him to land in prison the second time with six months sentence on issues involving the Eleko, the then king of Lagos. Having just established indirect rule, the government feared that they would lose the trust of both the traditional rulers and the masses because of such acts. So he was released. Upon Herbert's release, he became more careful with his writing but not losing his objectives. His popularity spread among the people, having won two cases in the British highest courts in favor of the people concerning land and also for Eleko of Lagos. He was adored by many and that paved way for his establishment of the first political party known as National Democratic Party NDP in 1923 with its motto as the safety of the people is the greatest. He maintained a close relationship with the executives even though he refused taking up any position for fear of oppression. This party encouraged universal education for all blacks and encouraged women to participate in politics. The confidence of this party was shaken when a new party arose in 1938, the Nigerian Youth Movement NYM, founded by Ernest Ecoli and Co, beating them in Lagos Council election. With that, a battle line was drawn. Herbert then developed a strategy, which was to adopt Enamdi Azikwe's idea for nationalism that aimed to unite the blacks living within and outside the country and end colonialism, creating a government controlled by the people and for the people. He joined forces with Azikwe's National Council of Nigeria and Cameroon, NCNC, in 1944, although most of his party members objected initially. He began by opposing the Richard's Constitution of 1946. It is sad that, although what was his dream came to reality on October 1st, 1960, Herbert did not live to see it come through. Two years after he joined the NCNC and contributed to no colonialism movement, he passed on on May 7th, 1946 in Lagos. He suffered acute rheumatism on one of the party's campaigns and was rushed back to Lagos. He married Carolina Pratt in 1898, although the marriage ended with her death in 1899 with no child. He had several children from other women. In memory of this great nationalist, journalist, advocate, engineer, architect, and politician, 
His face is printed on one of the Nigerian currencies, the one other note, which is now a coin. What's the take on Hebas Makoli as an African nationalist? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.